Hey guys, today's video is all about K-beauty and I've been wanting to make this video for a while because so many of you feel very overwhelmed when you go look at K-beauty online. And you know, here in the States, we can't buy these products in stores. So I think it's really difficult to know what's good, what's not good. And just to be able to, you know, see the products in person like we can with the brands that we're used to. So when it comes to actually buying K-beauty, it can be so hit or miss and I've been using it for probably close to 20 years now and there have been so many products I purchased that were just terrible and then others that have been amazing. So I wanted to break it down for you guys today and talk about five categories that I think Korean beauty does really really well and that most things that you buy from that category you'll probably like and then five categories that I've had bad or negative results with and just kind of share my experiences with you guys. So if that sounds good let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. Okay, so let's start with skincare because I feel like that's what K-Beauty is really known for. And I have to say most skincare that I've tried from K-Beauty has been good, but there have been some duds. And I think the one category where K-Beauty really, really shines is with toner. And toner has become such an important step in my skincare routine that I didn't really use before. I always thought of toner from back when I was growing up, like the sea breeze, astringent, toners that you put on your skin and they kind of sting and burn and dry up all your acne and stuff like that. These toners could not be further from that. So when I talk about toner, I'm not talking about the astringent kind. These are very gentle. They are hydrating for your skin. And I know I've talked about this in other videos before, but toner is really what has taken my skin from always being dry and flaky to being more moist and plump and healthy looking. So I have a couple couple favorite toners that I wanted to share with you. The one that I probably use the most is this one from Haru Haru Wonder and it's their Black Rice Hyaluronic Toner. So this toner is amazing. It's so hydrating and it's something that you put on as soon as you're done cleansing your face. So in the morning or at night after I'm done washing my face, I'll pour a few drops of this in my hands rub it together and then just pat it all over my skin. You can use a cotton pad too if you want. I do get that question sometimes. Personally, I like to use my hands because if you're using a cotton pad, that's gonna soak up some of the product, but you can definitely do that also. And I know I've said this before, but I like to think of toner as watering a plant, right? When you're watering a plant, you want the dirt to get completely saturated and it's not really enough, at least if you have really dry skin, to wash your face and then just slap on a moisturizer because eventually the moisturizer is gonna evaporate and your skin is gonna dry out. Not to mention the moisturizer is so much thicker that it really is sitting more on the top layer of your skin and it's not going super deep. And toner are more like a water consistency. So they're gonna go a little bit deeper than a moisturizer would. I personally like to put on a layer, wait a few minutes, like 10, 15 seconds, then add another layer. Sometimes I'll even do three if it's like winter time and my skin is really dry, but I want to get my skin super saturated with moisture and then I'll go and add my serum and then the moisturizer is the final step to just kind of lock it all in place. And ever since I've been doing that, my skin is so much better. I used to constantly deal with flakes. I would go to put foundation on and it would be a mess. So so I really think toner has saved my skin and Korean brands just make some of the best. So like I mentioned, the Haru Haru Wonder is just my favorite everyday toner. I really love this. It's super hydrating and I think most skin types would be able to use this. So if you're thinking of getting a toner, this is probably my number one pick. But another one that I really like, especially when my skin is very, very dry, this is my wintertime toner, is the Tear Tear Milk Skin Toner. So this one is, you've probably heard of milky toners before. So they're just a little bit thicker than something like this one. And it's really just gonna give you that extra boost of moisture. And this one is honestly one of the best that I've ever tried. I think the ones at the drugstore are getting better. I know lately I've mentioned one from Thayer's and Bioma also makes a great milky toner. 
there. So if you just want to go to the drugstore and pick something up, I think those are great options. But this one I think has a little bit of a slight edge for me. There's just something extra moisturizing about it. It just has such a beautiful texture and gives a nice dewy finish to your skin. So I do love this one. Another one that I use not every day, but maybe every couple of days is another from Haru Haru Wonder. This is the Centella 3% PHA Gentle Liquid Exfoliating Toner. So this is one that's gonna help exfoliate the top layers of your skin. PHA is so gentle. It's way more gentle than something like glycolic acid or even lactic acid. It's really just gonna work on the top layer of your skin. So this is one that I think you'll probably have to use it a little bit longer to see the results versus something that's stronger. But the upside to that is if you have sensitive skin and you feel like glycolic acid irritates you, then you might be able to use this one. I know for me having dry skin, I have to be careful and I have to use things that are more gentle. So I really like this one a lot. It helps get my skin super smooth. So this is another great toner option if you want an exfoliating one. So overall, I think K-Beauty just does toner so well. There are so many different choices for everyone, whether you have acne prone skin, oily skin, all the way through dry skin. There's just a bunch of different options. And I think Haru Haru especially is a great brand to start out with when it comes to skincare because they have some great stuff. Now on the downside, one category that I've had more misses than hits with are moisturizers. For some reason, I don't know why, K-Beauty moisturizers are all very thin and really lightweight. And maybe I just haven't found the right one. If you guys have found something a little richer and heavier, let me know. But I've tried so many moisturizers and it seems like the majority of them are those like gel cream moisturizers and it's just not quite enough for me. It's totally possible that because the traditional Korean skincare routine can have like 10 or 12 steps involved, maybe by the time they layer all that stuff on their face, they don't wanna put on a rich moisturizer, but I don't have time to do that many steps. I usually use my toner and I'll layer that a couple of times, but that's really thin, like water, and then maybe one or two serums, and then I'll put my moisturizer. And most of the ones that I've tried just haven't been enough. I feel like as the day wears on, my skin starts to feel a little bit dry. So that's one thing that I'm not crazy about when it comes to their moisturizers, but if you have more oily or combo skin, you might love their moisturizers. But there is another downside, and that is that so many of the moisturizers I've tried are really heavily fragranced. And I know here in America, fragrance in skincare is looked at kind of negatively, but I can't even tell you how many moisturizers I've tried from K-Beauty brands, and they're heavily perfumed, like not even just a little bit of a light scent, which I can totally, I'm fine with that. In fact, my favorite moisturizer is the Tatcha Dewy Skin Cream, and that one is fragranced. So I'm not against fragrance in skincare, but some of the moisturizers I've tried were just over the top, like they dumped a bottle of perfume in them and I, it just was way too much for me. So because of those experiences, I generally don't love Korean moisturizers, but there are two that I quickly wanna mention that I found that don't have a scent and that are probably the more hydrating options that I've found. I still don't think they compare to the Tatcha Dewy Skin Cream, but they're pretty good. So the first one is from Beauty of Joseon. This is their Dynasty Cream. And I have talked about this a lot here on my channel. I really do like it, especially in the warmer months. I think it's the perfect weight for my skin. Is it gonna be in the winter? Probably not. I'm probably gonna go back to the Tatcha, but this honestly has the best feel. It's very creamy. I like how it feels on my skin. It doesn't have a sticky texture and it also doesn't have the scent like I mentioned. So it's just an all around really great moisturizer. And also the Tear Tear Ceramic Cream. This one's even a little bit thicker than the Beauty of Joseon. It's probably the richest texture that I felt in a Korean moisturizer formula. So this is definitely another good option to check out, but yeah, I've tried, I don't even know how many moisturizers over the last 20 years, and these are really the only two <laughs> that I've really liked for my skin. So that's a category I would probably skip if you have either really dry skin or you don't like fragrance products. The next category I think K-Beauty does really well are sunscreens, and sunscreen is something that is really, really important to me as I've had skin cancer twice, so I've just become really fanatical about wearing it, and I discovered K 
K-Beauty sunscreens a couple of years ago and just fell in love with them. Now, I just wanna mention I have a sensitivity to chemical sunscreens here in the US. I have to use mineral-based formulas, otherwise I break out in a rash from the chemical formulations. But when it comes to the chemical sunscreens from Korean brands, they don't affect me at all. They actually don't cause any sensitivity whatsoever. So I think that they are worth mentioning. And if you're somebody who also can't wear chemical sunscreens here, you might wanna try out a Korean sunscreen and see if that works for you. Unfortunately, here in the United States, we haven't approved a sunscreen filter since the 1990s. So we're really, really far behind as far as the technology. The rest of the world has better sunscreens than we do. So if you don't like mineral formulations because they have a white cast or they feel thick or chalky, some of these might be a great option. And they're formulated so well that they almost feel like skincare. They feel like moisturizers or primers. A lot of them don't have the funky sunscreen smell that we're used to with our sunscreens. So a couple of my favorites are the Haru Haru Wonder, again, Black Rice Moisture Airy Fit Daily Sunscreen. This is SPF 50 and it has the PA++++. So it's a very, very effective formula. And what I love about it is just how thin it is. It feels basically like a moisturizer, but it's so lightweight that it almost sinks into your skin like a serum. It feels so nice. It has a beautiful texture non-sticky, so this is a great one. They also do make a mineral version of this as well. Beauty of Joseon also makes several options that I would highly recommend. The first one is their Relief Sun sunscreen. This one is also SPF 50, and I remember this going completely viral on social media because everybody just couldn't get over how just beautiful it feels. It's so elegant. It has this gorgeous feel like a lightweight moisturizer. And if you don't have super dry skin, you can even use it as your moisturizer and sunscreen in one because it definitely hydrates your skin. They also have another version that's even lighter weight than that, which is the Aqua Fresh version. And this just came out really recently. I got this about a month ago. And in the summertime, I almost prefer this one, even though I do have dry skin. In the summer when it's just hot and sticky and humid out. I want my sunscreen to feel as light as possible so that my makeup doesn't melt off and this one has a beautiful feel. If you want to go even lighter than that, Beauty of Joseon also has a sunscreen serum. So this is their Ginseng Moist Sun Serum. This is also SPF 50 PA++++ and this has almost like a cooling gel sort of feel to it. So it's really lightweight on your skin but at the same time it still gives you a lot of moisture and it almost has like a cushiony feel to it. I feel like it looks really good under makeup. So that's yet another good option. And if you don't want a dewy sunscreen, you want something a little bit more matte, Beauty of Joseon has their stick sunscreen. This is called the Matte Sun Stick with Mugwort and Camellia. So this one again is SPF 50 PA++++. And forget about the sunscreen sticks that you've tried from the drugstore that are so thick and chalky and can be super hard to rub in. This one has zero white cast. It is so thin and lightweight and it almost feels like you're putting on a pore blurring primer. It just makes your skin look so smooth. It takes down all the shine. And because it is so thin and weightless, foundation goes on beautifully on top of this. So don't be afraid of it because it's in a stick. I promise it is not like any other sticks sunscreen you've ever used. It's amazing. So those are some of my favorite Korean sunscreens, but honestly, there are so many great ones out there. I don't think you'll be disappointed in them at all. Next, um, another category that I'm not crazy about when it comes to Korean beauty is mascaras. I really haven't tried one that I've loved, and I think that's just due to personal preference. So when I look for mascara, I'm looking for something that's going to give me a lot of length and volume and kind of that false lash type of look. And and most Korean mascaras that I've tried have a very natural, very subtle kind of look to them. And they seem to be more focused on curling up the lashes versus giving length and volume. So it really just depends on what you're looking for. If you have more straight lashes that don't hold a curl and you don't want like the thicker, heavier formulas that we have, you might really enjoy the Asian mascaras. But just speaking for myself, I have the opposite problem. My lashes actually kind of curl up naturally on their own, but they're short. So I'm always looking for something that's gonna give a lot of the length and volume. So I haven't really had the best luck with mascaras from K-Beauty brands, but depending 
depending on what you're looking for, some of you might really enjoy them. All right, then flipping back to another category that I really enjoy from K-Beauty brands, and that is cleansers. I think K-Beauty does cleansers so well, and they're famous for their double cleanse. So either a cleansing balm or cleansing oil first, followed by a gentle cleanser just to rinse off all of the extra residue. And I have to say, I did double cleanse every single night religiously, but when my son was born, I got out of the habit of doing that because I just wanted to get to bed. I didn't want to spend any time on a nighttime routine. So I got out of the habit and I just really never went back to it. Now I'm so lazy. I just want to get to bed as soon as possible. So I've been using the La Roche-Posay oil cleanser because this is like a two-in-one oil, but it's also foaming and it's just one step. So it doesn't leave the oily residue behind. As you can see, I'm almost down to the bottom of it. I've had this for like over a year. It lasts forever. But if you are into the two-step routine of the cleansing oil or cleansing balm and then followed up by a regular cleanser, Korean brands have some of the best. I feel like they invented this method, so they really have it down pat. So while I don't currently have any cleansing oils to share with you, I know that the um, vanilla cleansing balm is one of the highest rated. I have tried that one before and it's really good. And I believe Haru Haru Wonder also has a cleansing oil that's super popular. I've heard a lot of people talking about it. So those are just a couple of cleansing oil, cleansing balm options if you're interested. But I actually have two regular cleansers that are supposed to be the second step of that routine that I use in the morning just to cleanse my face after sleeping at night. And the reason that I love these is because of how gentle they are. In the morning, I've already cleansed my face the night before, so I really don't want something that's really harsh or stripping because I don't need to take makeup off at this point. I usually just wanna like refresh my skin a little bit in the morning and get rid of any sweat or maybe if there's like a little bit of makeup residue from the night before, things like that. So one of my favorites is the Haru Haru Wonder Black Rice Moisture 5.5 Soft Cleansing Gel. This has the softest texture. It almost feels like you're not even using anything at all. It has this beautiful cushiony texture with a lot of slip and it doesn't foam up a lot either. So I think that's why I enjoy it because it doesn't leave my skin feeling really dry or stripped afterwards and I'm not like dying to put moisturizer on. It feels like it leaves a little bit of moisture behind. So I really love that one. It's also unsafe scented. And another one that I really enjoy that I just got recently is from Mixoon. This is their Centella Cleansing Foam. And even though this says it's a cleansing foam and I usually associate foaming cleansers with being really dry, this one is not at all. It actually feels like a cloud. Like it's so light and fluffy. When I cleanse my face with this, I don't know, it just feels so nice. Like it's a very sensory experience. I like it a lot. And this one also doesn't have a scent to it either. So while I'm not a huge fan of the double cleansing method, I do really enjoy the cleansers that I've tried from K-Beauty. And I think just in general, they do cleansers really well. They're just extremely focused on removing your makeup in the gentlest way possible and just cleansing your skin without over stripping it and damaging your moisture barrier. So I think K-Beauty cleansers are awesome. Then jumping back to makeup, I would say one category that I haven't been the biggest fan of is eyeshadows when it comes to K-Beauty beauty. Now, again, this is just going to come down to your personal preference. And I, I don't think that the formulas are bad. I actually think the eyeshadows that I've tried from them have been very finely milled, especially the matte shades are so, so smooth. But the trends for eyeshadow over in Korea are very different from what they are here. They're into super, super subtle looks when it comes to eyeshadow. So I have a couple of palettes here, and this is basically what you're gonna get when you look for Korean eyeshadows because you aren't gonna find bold colors. You're gonna find something very similar to this. Everything is very pale, very light. A lot of these colors don't even really show up on my skin tone or they're very washed out. Today, I actually used this palette Partially, I used, um, this one's from Clio and it's called Picnic by the Sunset. It's actually a beautiful color story. It's a little bit more like of a dusty pink. So I ended up using these two kind of purpley shades for my crease. But then when it came to putting something on my lid, the three shimmer shades that are in this palette are glitter. 
And that's pretty much what you find in most K-Beauty palettes. They don't have those more metallic, rich, shimmery shades that we're used to here. And as I was using the matte shades in this palette, I thought, you know, I don't really want to wear glitter today. So I ended up just grabbing a shimmer shade from the Viseart Paris Reveries palette instead, because I'm just not a glitter person. And this is really the trend over there, and it has been for a while. So most eyeshadow palettes that you get are going to have glitter shades versus shimmer shades. And not only that, but the color stories are all typically very washed out because the focus for them is not going to be on your eyes. Usually it's on lips and cheeks. They typically just go very subtle with their eyeshadows. So if that's something that interests you, then I would definitely check these out. I would say my favorite Korean brands when it comes to eyeshadow are Clio. I think their palettes are really great. And also, I don't know if I'm saying this right. In a recent video, I said Dayzeek, but somebody corrected me and said it's Daisy Q. So either way, they have some really pretty color stories too. They're just very subtle. So for me personally, I've stopped buying Korean eyeshadows because I just find that I never use them. All right, the next category that I think K-Beauty does so well are cream and liquid blushes especially. Their powder blushes are good, but I don't feel like they're anything different or extraordinary compared to like what's already out at the drugstore. But as far as liquid and cream formulas, I think they definitely have some really cutting edge formulas and they're like things that we're seeing come out now in high-end brands, but a lot less expensive. And you're not finding anything like these at the drugstore. So the first thing would be like serum blushes. We all know that the hourglass ones that came out, the Unreal blushes are super popular right now, but K-Beauty has actually had serum blushes out for a long time. These Juicy Pang blushers from A Pew are so good. I'm actually wearing this one on my cheeks today and they are just such a cool formula. It actually actually looks like nail polish, but when you paint it on your cheeks, it's this really super thin serum-like texture, but it can be built up really easily because it's like water. So it's not like a sticky blush that's gonna not stick to itself. You know, like you put it on and it just disappears right into your skin, almost like a stain. And then you can just add, keep adding more on top. This is the only color that I have at the moment, but I have owned other shades in the past. And it's a really cool formula. Another really nice one that I've been liking a lot are the Her Moist ampule blushers. These are kind of the same thing. They have this really super lightweight, serum -y texture. They're a little bit dewy, but they do sink into your skin and they don't leave like this sticky or tacky feel. And what I love about these is just how buildable they are, right? If you have lighter skin tone, you can just do one or two layers and you're good. If you have a deeper skin tone, I think they're easy to build up. Another really huge trend right now are blurring blushes. And one of the absolute best that you've probably seen me use in several videos lately are these blurry pudding pots from a brand called Fui. These are so amazing. I got these on Amazon and they come in a million colors ranging from really pale nudes all the way to like deeper, darker colors. They have the coolest texture. It's like this bouncy kind of moussey feel and you can wear them on both your lips and your cheeks. And even though they're that blurry, moussey texture, they almost feel like they have a primer in them. So even when you put them on your lips, they don't look dry or cracked. They actually kind of smooth out your lips and just make everything look so good. And the same thing with your cheeks. When you put these on, they kind of blur all your pores and texture. They're just fantastic. And there's nothing that you would find like this at the drugstore at this kind of price point. You would pay a lot more for some of the high-end blurring blushes that we've seen from like Huda Beauty and Lawless and YSL. And even those, they're just blushes. I love that these are like a two in one. You can put on lips and cheeks. So those are some of my favorite K-Beauty blushes at the moment. And I think when it comes to really new trendy formulas, you can find a lot of K-Beauty for a lot less money. Jumping back to a category that I don't really love when it comes to K-Beauty are foundations and I guess concealers. We can kind of throw those in there too, mainly because I think the shade ranges are severe lacking and things are starting to turn around. You may have heard that that brand Tear Tear that has the red cushion compact that went viral. That comes in a ton of different shades and I think they even just expanded the range to include um, their silver compact and then I think the pink one as well. Personally, I didn't like the red one at all. I felt like it was too full coverage for me. It was way too dry. I just didn't like the way that it looked on my skin. I do like the silver one though, but again, it's very limited right now in terms of, I think the silver one comes in 20 shades, which is 
decent, but when I bought this, the shade range was extremely limited. I think there were only like three or four colors and now there's 20, but that's how most foundations are when it comes to K-Beauty. So one of my all time favorite formulas, the Misha Choboyang BB Cream is like that. It only comes in a couple of different options. So unless you have pretty fair skin, it's gonna be hard for you to find a foundation. So I feel like foundations are starting to come along a little bit more and these Korean makeup brands are starting to see that you know there's a market for them here in the west which i think is prompting them to expand their shade ranges and offer different options but for now i think with most brands other than tier tier the selection is really really limited even if you have a lighter skin tone they might not have your undertone because i find it really hard to even get the right undertone sometimes so foundations and concealers are something that i don't typically buy from k beauty brands the fifth category that i absolutely love when it comes to k beauty and this might even be my favorite category are lip products i think they just have the coolest lip products and kind of like the blushes their lip products are similar to ones that we're finding in these high-end luxury brands but at a much more affordable price so one thing that i've been loving lately in addition to the blurry pudding pots because i talked about those already those are great if you want more of a matte lip option that's not going to dry you out but another really popular thing in korea are glossy lip stains so these are products that, you know, it goes on like a gloss. It has a little bit of shine. It's really hydrating. But then as you wear it and the shine starts to wear away, it leaves behind that stain. So I know Milani has come out with something like that recently. And Rare Beauty has glossy lip stains. Fenty has them. But I feel like the Korean formulas are even that much more hydrating for me. So the first option that I really love are these ones from Daisy Q or Daisy. I can't, I don't know how you say that. But anyway, um, these are just so beautiful. They come in the most gorgeous colors. I only have three right now, but I wear these all the time and I absolutely love them because they're so comfortable and they're long lasting at the same time because of the stain. And I find that the stain wears away really evenly and really nicely. So those are one of my favorite options. Another amazing option are the Romand Juicy Lasting Tint. So I have this in just one shade, but it is the prettiest color, especially if you don't like to go too deep with your lip colors. This one is 25 Bare Grape, and it's very similar to the Daisy Q ones. It starts out glossy, but then the pigment hangs around for a while afterwards. So that's another really awesome one to try. And also the Peri Pear Out Water Bear Tints. These are amazing as well. I have these in two colors. And again, it's the same kind of thing. I just love how they make your lips look really juicy to begin with and just really hydrated. So in that way, they're not like those traditional lip stains that we have here in this country. I mean, again, like the brands I mentioned before, we have some that are coming out, but I just feel like the K-Beauty ones are even more hydrating and just feel better on your lips. So I really enjoy those a lot. And another lip formula that I've been absolutely loving are really hydrating, dewy, tinted balms. And one that I've just been obsessed with, and I'm actually wearing one today in the video, are also from Daisy Q. And these are kind of similar to the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lips. They have the little click pen style applicator. They have that same cushiony feel. They're very melty. And these are actually super pigmented. You wouldn't think so, but they give your lips so much color. And because they have that really melty soft texture, I feel like they make your lips look really smooth. They kind of go over the lip lines a little bit and fill them in. And the best part about these is they don't have a scent. So if you don't like the coconut smell, of the tart ones or I know um, another Korean brand Nature Republic has their honey melting lips those have like a really fruity scent that I'm not a fan of even though I love the formula so these feel just like the Nature Republic ones but with no fragrance and they're really affordable so these are great also Roman's melting glasting balm is another huge favorite of mine I have five shades now yeah five shades and these are very similar to the Revlon Glass Shine lipsticks that were out that ended up being discontinued. I'm really not sad about those anymore because these are around and they're just as good. I They feel almost identical and they're really affordable too. And these have that same 
cushiony, really melty texture. They have a nice glossy finish and they just make your lips feel really, really hydrated at the end of the day. Even after the color wears away and the shine, I still feel some hydration left from this, like a true lip balm. So I think those are another amazing option if you like that type of product. And also Tear Tear has some as well. And this packaging is gorgeous. It looks really high end. It's almost artsy because the cap isn't exactly lined up with the bottom. So it's like just a little bit off center and you don't twist it. You actually just pull them right up. But it's very similar again to the Romand balms or the Revline Glass Shine lipsticks. And I have these in two colors that are also just really, really pretty. I think one of my favorite things about K-Beauty lip products in general is even though they're pigmented, everything is just a little bit translucent. So everything has kind of like a watercolor look to it or like a little bit stained but at the same time with the hydration and the gloss on top so I just love that look and just that the lip products are so affordable they basically rival the prices that we have at the drugstore but the formulas are so high-end it's really amazing so these are definitely some formulas and brands to check out as well so anyway guys those are my thoughts on kind of the best and worst of k-beauty hopefully it gives you a good starting point if you're interested in trying some things from these brands I think you really can't go wrong with any of it and if you have some k-beauty favorites I'd love for you to post them down in the comments let us know what you like about the products and maybe we can all discover some new things along the way so I just want to take a minute to thank all of you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video I truly appreciate it if you haven't subscribed yet be sure to hit that button before you go and I just hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all in my next one. Take care guys. Bye.